Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing really well today. I'm in Luminar 4, and this video is going to be an advanced workflow for landscapes. And so it's not something I get a lot of opportunity to shoot, but it um, makes me very happy when I do get the opportunity because I just love them, as we probably all do. But it's also an example of how I, I, I use layers and how I balance uh, different components of the image on different layers. And so here's my base photo. This was a shot at Moraine Lake in um, Western Canada, up in the Canadian Rockies. And this is my finished photo after going through a number of different things here in Luminar. So I'm gonna walk through that workflow. Now, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. Hit the uh, subscribe button down below and the little bell. That'll give you notifications whenever I post new videos, which is pretty often. And also, if you don't mind, give me a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you like my video. That helps me. and. Um, I appreciate that very much. So let's get into it. Now the first thing I do is I start in the base layer and I'll start in the light uh, tool, which is kind of like raw develop in the old one. And I'll probably pull up smart contrast here a little bit, maybe something like that. Uh, I wanna pull down the highlights, maybe something about there and maybe pull up the shadows a little bit. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a subtle kind of balancing of the light that I generally do here on the base layer. And then the next thing I may do is hop over here to Accent AI, or AI Enhance, I should call it. Uh, AI Accent is the first tool. And I'll go like, you know, 17, 18, something like that. And I'm also gonna use a little Sky Enhancer here. I use it uh, sparingly, uh, but it, it does a good job. As you can see, just this filter alone has taken me from that to that. So I, th I think it's helped a little bit. And, and I feel like now I've got a, a good base to start from. There's the, the, the actual base photo, I should say, the raw file and that's my current state. Now what I wanna do is start separating components of the image, and the first thing I'm gonna do is separate the highlights and work on those. So this is where I'll go add a new layer, and I'll add a new adjustment layer, and while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and rename it, and I'm just gonna call it HL for highlights, and that allows me to more easily, when I'm looking at the layers, because I'm gonna have several layers here, it allows me to more easily remember what is what and what I'm doing on each layer. So I recommend renaming if, uh, if you haven't already been doing that. Okay, now I'm gonna start in the light tool again. I'm gonna come down slightly on the exposure. Uh, something maybe about like that. And then I'm also gonna pull the highlights down and maybe something about like that. So keep in mind, I'm just working on the highlights and so other parts of the image you may not um, like at this point, and that's fine. I don't necessarily like them either, but I don't care. I'm not thinking about those other parts. I'm looking at the highlights, which for me is primarily um, part of the water and of course the sky. So I'm gonna go back over here to AI Enhance. I'm gonna get this Sky Enhancer one more time and use it again. So maybe something about like 25. Then I'm gonna come into AI Structure and take the amount down to about negative 50. Now everything's applying globally, but we're gonna fix that here in a minute. So when I say global, I mean these sliders so far are impacting the entire image. But like I said, we're gonna fix that because I'm just looking at the highlights. So disregard that this negative AI structure has softened up the trees and the mountains. Don't worry about that at this time. Okay, the other thing I wanna do is add a little golden hour. So I'm gonna to go to about 40 here. And again, just looking at the highlights. So 40, 41, something like that. Trying to warm those up. It was a sunset, obviously a long exposure. Uh, this was something like a couple of three minutes. Um, but anyway, I wanted to add a little bit more warmth to that light that's coming in on the clouds over the mountain. And in keeping with that theme, I'm gonna pop over to the Pro tab go into split toning, and I'm gonna work on the highlights here just gently. I'm gonna go to about three and about like a 22 or something like that. And again, warming up the highlights. And so uh, I can show you this layer. This layer, I've gone from that, which is my base image, to this. Now, keep in mind, we're just focused on the highlights, and this is where this step comes in. I'm gonna go to Edit Mask, and I'm gonna click on Luminosity Mask and allow that to apply it to the photo. Okay, the luminosity mask has been created and applied automatically to the photo. If you're not familiar with luminosity masking, I have a video there about it, but basically it targets the mask to the brighter parts of the image, which are the highlights, and that's what I'm working on. So that's why I did all these edits and then I stuck a luminosity mask on there. So I wanna go show that to you so I can click on brush and then I come over here and click on show me. And you can see the darker red uh, spots are where the um, more intense uh, level of mask has been applied, or in other words, um, more of the edit is showing up in the red parts than in the, the parts that are not red. So very little is showing up over here in the trees or the rocks, a little bit in the mountains, very little in this blue part of the water, but a whole lot in the sky and in the reflection of the sky. So 
That's why I isolated highlights and then worked on those and then applied everything with the luminosity mask so it would hit just the brighter parts of the image. So if I turn this off, there it is without the lumino uh, luminosity mask and the highlight edits applied. And when I turn it back on, there it is with it applied. So it's a little bit warmer, a little bit different. I'm not looking for a massive change here, just trying to uh, target that part of the photo. So having done that, the next thing I wanna do is go target shadows. So to do that, I'm gonna say plus, add new adjustment layer. And once again, while I'm here, I'm gonna click rename layer and I'm gonna call it SH because I'm too lazy to type the whole thing. But again, that keeps you um, clear in your head about what uh, edits are on what layer. Okay, once again, I'm going back into light. And once again, I'm gonna hit smart contrast. I'm gonna do like a 22 or so. Oops, uh, something like 22, whatever, low 20s. I'm just trying to add back a little bit of uh, contrast to the image. And I'm gonna take the shadows down actually, uh, just a tiny bit, like a, a negative six. Now this time I'm gonna grab AI structure and I'm gonna go positive with it, like low 20s, like maybe 22 or something. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna get details. I'm gonna get medium details and go to like 27 or something. Um, again, focused on the shadows. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing with the luminosity mask in a moment right now. Everything's applying globally, but that's okay. Um, I'm really just focused on the mountains and the trees and, and these rocks in the foreground. That's really all I care about for what I'm doing here. And while I'm at it, I'm also gonna get landscape enhancer and golden hour one more time. This time I'm gonna go a little bit lower, like maybe 24, 25. I wanna put a little bit of that warmth on these um, shadowed areas, less warmth than I put in the sky because to me, I feel like that's how it would look in reality. It would be more golden uh, in the light areas and a little bit less golden or impact of that golden hour in the darker areas. So seems to make sense to me logically, so that's why I did it that way. Okay, now having done that, I'm gonna go back up here to layers and once again, I'm on this shadows layer. I'm gonna hit edit mask and I'm gonna choose luminosity mask. Okay, so now my luminosity mask has been applied. However, I want it to apply to the shadows. A luminosity mask by default is gonna apply more heavily towards the brighter parts of the photo. So I need to go into mask. I'm gonna click on brush and I'm gonna go over here to this menu and I'm gonna click invert. So now let me show it to you. You can see this is the opposite of the luminosity mask that I used before. Less heavily applied in the brighter parts of the uh, photo and much more heavily applied in the darker parts of the photo. And you can see what it's considering the dark parts of the photo. It does create that automatically. Um, you can come in and adjust that with that brush. You can erase it or paint it into certain areas. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. I actually think it works fine for me in this image. Okay, so we're, we've come a pretty good ways. There's the before photo and after, and here's the sliding um, window thing or whatever. You can see we've targeted a couple of different areas of the photo. Now I wanna do another adjustment layer. So I'm gonna say add new adjustment layer. And this one is gonna be some touch up edits. So I'm just gonna call this touch up, touch up. And I go over here and pick a few sliders and some things that I wanna work on. The first thing is back into light. And once again, I'm gonna do a little bit of smart contrast, like a maybe a, a 17. I'm gonna take the highlights down a little bit, like a, a 12 or 13, and the shadows up a little bit, like another 15 or 16, something like that, 17, 16. Then I'm gonna pop into AI accent, and, and I'm just gonna give this a slight bump, so something like nine or 10. Again, these are touch-up edits, so they are applying globally, and I'm gonna leave them that way. I'm just making, um, just visual choices at this point, just things about the image that I want to change. Um, I've targeted the highlights on that first adjustment layer. Um, I targeted shadows in the next one. This one is really touch up, as I said. So it's just little things that I wanna alter in the photo. So I'm just kinda going through some of the different filters that are gonna help me do that. Next, I'm gonna go into color. I'm gonna give a little bit of bump to vibrance. I like to use vibrance a lot because it doesn't pop the really dominant colors. It tends to pop some of the other stuff. So it gives you a nice, uh, I think beautiful color across your image without really oversaturating everything in the image. Now having done that, I might go into blue in these advanced settings here and pull down the saturation a little bit. The blue in the water actually does look like that, but it can begin to look kind of fake in photos just because it's so intense. It's like mineral fed from the glacier and you know all the, the minerals coming off the rocks there. And anyway, it's incredible. It really is that color blue but I still wanna to tone it down a little bit because I'm not trying to go for something that's over the top. And one more time, I'm gonna hit golden hour down here. And this is again, a global adjustment. So like maybe 17 or 18, just putting a little bit of that warmth across the entire photo here. Then a couple of fun things. I pop over here to mystical and I'm gonna give that about a 30 or so, something 
you know, maybe like that. It adds that kind of that, war uh, not warm, that shadowy kind of romantic glow to a photo, which I like quite a bit. And so I just love that look. And then while I'm at it, I'm also gonna go over to Orton, which is over here, and give that a little bit as well. So maybe like a 12 or 14. And these are really just moody kind of adjustments, just things I like to do just because I like the look. Certainly none of this is required. More than anything, this video is about the different steps I take and how I think about things, isolating highlights and then isolating shadows and then doing some touch-up adjustments. So every photo is different, so don't feel like you have to use Orton or Mystical. I like to use it on landscapes and cityscapes because it adds a little shadow, a little mystery, and I like to have that to make the kind of uh, make the viewer kind of work for it, so to speak, to think about things and kind of like, ooh, what's over there? That's kind of interesting, you know. Instead of hey, everything's perfectly lit, it's a shadow. I don't know, shadows your friend, in my opinion. Okay, and at this point, I actually thought I was finished. I really liked the image. I was here, and I was like, you know, that's the original, and that's my current state, and I really liked it. But then I saw a couple other things I wanted to do, so. Just for you know, fun, I added one more final adjustment layer, and so I'm gonna call this final, because after this I just need to quit, because otherwise I'll be here all day because I could just keep editing and doing things and changing things and changing my mind. I'm very indecisive about a lot of my edits, so I bounce around quite a bit, as, as you may have noticed. But um, I wanted to come back here and do a couple more uh, little things. The first one is I'm gonna go into color, and I'm gonna take saturation vibrance down just a tiny bit more. And again, that's simply because I feel like um, it's, it's getting a little too rich and I don't want to overdo it. Now, I also think that helped quite a bit with the mountains there because they were picking up a bit of a blue cast and pulling these two down I think helped a little bit. You could also just go into edit mask and uh, brush that reduction in just to the mountains if you wanted to isolate them and that's something that I often do. And then I'm going to go into the details and I'm going to go to medium details and I'm going to bump these up a little bit. I want to add a little bit of crunch to those mountains and so this will require a mask. I'm gonna click on brush, and I've got my brush here, and I'm just gonna mask this in or paint it in. All I've done is increase the kind of crunchiness of the details, and I wanna give a little bit to those mountains. Uh, you can always check your mask by clicking here, and you can see I didn't get it all. And truthfully, I don't really have the right size brush. I recommend kind of going slow and using a small brush. I'm kind of doing this quickly simply because this is for demo purposes but um, I will lower the, uh, or decrease the brush size here and come across some of these things and hit that little rock there. I think that's fine. I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna say done. And that's really the full workflow. It was really for me about isolating, you know, doing a couple of base edits on the, on the bottom uh, base layer, which was like the light tool and a little bit of AI enhance, just to get the light a little bit more evenly distributed. And then I move on to highlights, isolating those with the luminosity mask. Moved on to shadows, isolated those with an inverted luminosity mask, and then did a couple of layers for touch-up and finalization. And really, that's my workflow, my friend. So here's before, and there's after. And here's the sliding uh, window, if you want to see the full before and after. Now, there are a couple of little, uh, I think they're called specular highlights, uh, from shooting into the sun and doing a long exposure. I'll go in with the eraser and take those out, but I'm not going to walk through that. If you don't know how to use the eraser tool, I have a video about it there. But I just wanted to share this advanced workflow. That's kind of how I think about things and how I use layers to isolate components of the image. And that way, the reason I do that is because you can just focus on that area. And then when you create a mask, your mask is going to take every one of those filters and apply it just to those areas that are being covered by the mask. So that's my thinking. That's my workflow. Hopefully it was fun and helpful. Like I said before, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. That helps me because it tells YouTube you like what I'm creating. And I hope you do. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. If you have ideas, leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. See you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.